Today I thought I would paint a bucket. Um, here's a picture I took some time ago in northern Michigan. And I found this old bucket sitting on the, on the grass by a, a home that's uh, been abandoned for quite some time. So I just took it and stuck it on a tree branch that was in the area. And uh, it's pretty beat up, but I may or may not show all of that. The main thing I want to show you is how to paint the, the bucket. So I thought what I'd do first is I would lay in a background. And to do that, I'm going to use uh, this cheap disposable brush. You can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's a two inch. I think it's hog's hair on here. I'm not sure, but it uh, has a very, very um, defined end on it where it's a lot of, a lot of space between the, the hairs on it. So I'm just going to gently indicate a background that's uh, out of focus. It's there, but uh, we aren't seeing much. <clears throat> I'm going to take some. Uh, I'm going to take some raw sienna. I'm going to take some uh, some blue. Put some blue in there with it. Test it on my test sheet. See if it's what I want. I think I'll push it a little bit more to the blue at the start here, at the top of the uh, of the picture. Okay, that's that's pretty close. All right, so I've got a nice juicy wash on my palette. And I'm going to lay in a couple quick strokes, and then I'll take another large brush and soften the edges. Because I don't want uh, strong edges or hard edges in the background here. I'm just trying to create a setting for the bucket. So let's just use this brush, lay in a couple big strokes. I'm going to take another round brush. Come in here and just soften some of these edges. I think I'll add a little ochre in it or raw sienna in this part. And as we get lower in the picture, I'm going to add some sap green in here. Uh, just to kind of give the impression that uh, we're looking at trees in the background or grasses in the background. So I'm just going to lay a little bit of that in there. So I'm going to take um, some sap green, a little bit of yellow ochre. I don't want it too bright a green. I think something just like that. I'm going to take a, a brush, a wet brush, no color in it, and just break up these edges. I don't want the background to stand out too much as far as hard edges. All the hard edges and the stronger values are going to be right here in the bucket. Okay, so that's, that's in there pretty good. I like that. I'm going to take some clear water now with my round brush and just splatter in this. It gives a nice a nice texture. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna dry this now. All right, so I'm gonna have my light source coming from the upper right. So I'll go darker on the uh, bucket or the pail on the left side. And on the inside, I'll go darker on the right side. So let's just lay in some values here. As soon as you put a couple strokes in there, you realize, okay, I like that color or it's, it's uh, maybe a little bluer than I want it to be. So I'm just gonna take some burnt umber, put a little bit of uh, burnt sienna in with it also. And I'm just gonna work that color in here. Just kind of push it around a little bit. And it's a little, it's a little darker up in this area and on the shadow side of the bucket. So I want to add a little more of my ultramarine blue, some burnt umber, maybe a touch of Payne's gray in there. What I do is I mix up several colors on my palette and I'll adjust them. I'll, I'll tweak each one of them as I go and uh, until I feel like I got the effect that I want in the picture. Okay, I'm going to soften that edge just with clear water. I don't want that to be a that noticeable. Uh, another bucket that I found at the same time was uh, really had a lot of burnt sienna in it. So I'm going to add that to this piece here. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to bring that burnt sienna inside the bucket. And a little bit of ultramarine blue in here also. This is the strongest shadow. It's going to be right inside the bucket in that corner. So 
Then I gotta brush with just clear water now. I'm gonna start where it's dry here and just slowly start bumping into this shape. Because I want to transition, but I don't want to see any hard edges there. And I noticed that curve in there, and I, when I did that, I figured I'm going to leave that in. This bucket was pretty beat up, and uh, so why not play up where the top of this, the ellipse on the top isn't perfect. Now, underneath this lip here, it's a little darker, as you can see in the picture here. So I'm going to take some uh, burnt sienna, some ultramarine blue, and I'm just going to add a nice dark wash underneath there. That'll help define that lip right there. I think I'll play up this dent that's in the side of this bucket. Let's kind of put that value in. Then I'm looking at this. I'm trying to decide what I want to do with that. Do I like that? Maybe I'll leave it. Um, that might be a little harsh right there. So I might just take a damp brush, just clear water, just in a circular motion, just kind of break up that line a little bit. Now that I've had a few seconds to look at this, I think I will, I think I'll calm this down just a little bit. All right, so it's just my impression looking at that bucket, making some changes. At some point you have to spend more time looking at this than the reference because things are gonna turn out different in different areas. So you gotta learn to uh, uh, make changes on the fly. It's just kind of accentuating that dent that's in here. I like this, I think I'm gonna leave all that. But I think that's a pretty harsh line right there. So I think just with a circular motion, I'm just gonna straddle that shape right there. I think I'm gonna push the burnt sienna, the rust color inside this bucket a little stronger. And like I did on the background, I'm going to take clear water and I'm going to sp splatter it into this color that's on here now. You don't want to do it right away or it'll, it'll disappear. It'll be like this. It'll diffuse too much. But if we wait till it's soaked in a little bit, you're going to get a much smaller detail in there. Okay, right there. It's doing it. It looks really nice. Define the lip of this bucket a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of this rust color up in here. Okay. okay, I'm looking at this in here again. Maybe I can get some more texture in there. Clear water. I like the combination of this, these earth tones with a little bit of a ultramarine blue in there. Uh, they work really, really well together. Another bucket that I've got has these rings run through this area. So I think I'll put one in here and one down here at the bottom. But I want to wait till it dries before I do that. Okay, so it's getting a nice strong texture to it, which is good. And I can go on and work on the, uh, the branch, this old dead branch that it's sitting on. So I'm going to start up here at the top. Again, I'm using some earth tones. But I don't want it to match the bucket, so I will get into some more of a, a gray, uh, Payne's gray, ultramarine blue. Just accentuating that, that big dent that's in it right there. So I'm into my ultramarine blue, so my burn umber. Test it on my sheet. All right, let's come in here. Yeah. 
And this is in the shadow area, this branch. So I'm, even though I've got burnt umber and some ultramarine blue in there, I'm going to drop in just a little more ultramarine blue, which is a cool temperature color. Okay. Now I think as long as I'm careful, I can go over here and do this part of the branch. Now I could have done that ahead of time, uh, but it was still a little bit wet in here. I didn't want to, uh, to interfere with that. So let's come in here and throw the other part of the branch in here. I think it's dry enough. There's still some puddles in here, but I think it's dry enough that I can put the handle in here, at least in this section. It's wet over here, but let's just, uh, let's just speed this up and do that. I think I'm going to darken that whole side of that connection right there. We don't need to spell the whole thing out. Part of the handle actually sticks out the outside, other side of this, uh, this little tab here. And that kind of helps a lot right there. But you got to remember when you're working over here, if you got wet areas over here to, uh, to be careful, I got my hand into that, but clear water and, uh, paper towel and I can I can pull that back out but uh, but that was pretty easy to fix obviously you can tell I've I've made that mistake a number of times I'm gonna go to a real small brush right now and uh, take my ultramarine blue some Payne's gray and I'm gonna put some cracks in this uh, branch you can see right here these defined weathered cracks that are in here. So I'm going to play up a few of those in here. And I'm not paying that much attention to my reference. The reference, I kind of look at it, and that tells me all I need to know to, uh, to place that in. You can, uh, you can just kind of wing it in some areas. And I'll do the same thing over here. I could draw it this way and get a fine line, but sometimes I put my brush on a side. That way I get a more irregular stroke in it. That more irregular stroke is, is more believable and it uh, works better to create the effect that I'm after. I want to show you the, uh, the paper I'm using here. And it seems to work pretty good. It's very reasonably priced. Um, it's got a nice surface on it. It allows you to pull color out. Um, it's 25% uh, cotton, um, and there's 60 sheets in a pad. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's a great paper to, uh, to practice, to learn with. Uh, you don't need to use uh, arches or 100% rag paper. Uh, you can get some wonderful effects with uh, a paper of this quality. All right, so I want to play up this, the highlights that are in that wood right there. It'll give more definition to those cracks, too. So I'm going to take clear water with a small brush, and I'm going to pull color out just below that crack. clean that up if I think I need to. But after I do that, I'll also go back in and I'll try to pull a little highlight out on that. Much. I'm not going to do a lot to it, but I just need to add a little pigment to it in a few spots just so that uh, we know it's there. All right, let's just keep going here. And to just on the bottom half of this lip, um, just to give it a little feeling of roundness. Right there, you can tell it. Over here, I might actually pull the color out so it stands out. So I'm going to be careful here and uh, put the other side of this handle in. Oh, 
I'll take a couple sticky notes. And just kind of protect the area where I want to splatter. A little more of a rust color, a little more burnt sienna. It's an easy way to get texture on there and keep your background clean. Okay, let's dry that and put that little striping on here, the top and the bottom, that little ridge that's in there. The right way to do it is to turn it upside down too. It's, uh, it's kind of awkward to go this way like this. I'm, as a left-hander or a right-hander, it's hard to do that. So what I'll do is I'll turn it this way. And then I can rest my hand on here, hinge it right here, and I can get in there and I can just go all day long treating these shapes. It's a lot easier way to do it uh, than trying to do it this way. It's just not natural as a right-hander or a left-hander. Well, I've got that in and I'm looking at it and think, well, it could be a little darker probably. So I'm just gonna add a little more pigment in here, a little darker value. It's a little shadow underneath that lip right there. Okay. It's amazing, you can do a lot of techniques on one subject like this. I haven't done yet on this, I haven't splattered it with clear water. Um, and then pull out color. Now I splattered back here wet on wet. I did a little bit of that here, but right now I wanna get some defined uh, shapes on here. So I'm gonna take a wet brush, clear water, snap it on here, look at the little dots on there. Take a paper towel, push down hard and away. You're, you're pulling color out of these little wet uh, splatters on here. It just helps give it a nice stuff. Uh, rusty corroded look to it you can see how that how that works and to accentuate that i can go in there with a little bit of color a little bit of value and i can come underneath these little areas we've pulled out just a little bit not all of them It actually adds a nice texture to this bucket. It gives it an, an aged look to it. Okay. All right, we'll pull a little color out on that, uh, on that rim, a little bit on the handle, and uh, we'll be done. So the light's hitting the top of this handle. <clears throat> so I can come in here. There's more than one way to do it. I can pull it out with clear water, but also you can take an X-Acto knife and uh, come in here and scrape out. Sometimes for an old beat up piece of metal or a handle like this, this might be more effective than pulling out color because it's going to be more irregular. Here I'm just going to take clear water and just on the very top edge, just to give some shape to this handle. I think that gets the point across enough. Um, we got lots of, we used a lot of different techniques in here and uh, to give this nice old bucket a lot of character.